This is a photo of the boys' weekend at the beach house. I love this photo. It's a happy snap of Uncle Mick, Mr. Boyatzis, Uncle Steve, and my dad looking very cheerful. <laughs> Behind them is Annie Stukani pouring the also beaming Uncle Leffy a glass of beer. <laughs> the beach house was and still is at 4 Benyon Street, Triggs Island. It can only be described as a three bedroom, loosely termed one bathroom house accommodating some 40 people. <laughs> I will quick, quickly describe the logistics of fitting these people into the house, somewhat matching the seven fishes and five loaves parable. On entering through the glass panel front door, one entered a loop and sleep out with not as yet fashionable, unpolished matte wooden floorboards. Immediately to the left of the door slept the Gavin. Perpendicular to this, with his bed abutting the northeastern wall, was Evan Mix. Adjacent to his bed was a door, the entrance to the palatial two, by, two metre by two metre room housing Uncle Mick's family. In here slept Uncle Mick, the Adespo, the double bed with planks in situ and Maria's bed. To the right of the front door was Uncle Leffy and Auntie Chrissy's bed, and batting the northwestern wall, Barry's bed. Adjacent to Barry's bed was another expansive two metre by two metre room housing my mum and dad, myself and Lenny, at who that time my dad affectionately recorded, re referred to as the Grinha, <laughs> because of her resistance to sleeping habits. Elsa, George, Gina, the youngest and last family member to join the beach house. To separate the front room, the lounge room was a wall with wooden hit windows which were good for climbing through. This room housed a dining table and chairs which doubled as a table tennis and pool table and a couch and a huge radio which was always on and introduced and educated us all to the hits of the 60s. I had first heard good vibrations on that radio. <laughs> Off that room was Uncle Steve and Theo Bangulio's room. Through the lounge heading to the back of the house was the girls' room. In order from west to east and parallel to each other were Margaret, Rosie Mix and Rosie George's bed. Under Rosie Mix's pillow was housed her snot rag <laughs> for her allergies. <laughs> Marina's bed was parallel, was perpendicular to these three. Rosie and George inherited her bed when Rosie Steves moved out after marrying Theo. <laughs> <laughs> the girls had homemade dresses, homemade striped dress, dresses made for them. The sofa had pillows matching their dresses. Excess, <laughs> excess materials never wasted. The room was good as you could jump from one bed to the other like a Greek wallaby. <laughs> Next to the room was a diminutive kitchen, filled, fitted with all mod cons, where four grown women with little kids would take their turns to fetch their respective family evening meals without a whimper or hint of disagreement. Imagine that now. More likely the Martians would land a forest place. <laughs> Through the next door was a dining room, complete with what seemed to, at that time, a 100-foot dining table. Here all the people would sit, eating and talking without the necessity for disagreement or derision. I remember what, whatever Theo Despo only Chrissy had cooked always seemed to be more appetising than what we were eating. <laughs> Marie and I would be the last to leave the table because we weren't allowed to get up until we finished eating. <laughs> I wasn't interested in food back then, a problem with some persistence I managed to overcome. <laughs> <laughs> to such a level, occasionally I'm reprimanded by Uncle Mick for being too fat. <laughs> <laughs> the big events at the beach house were barbecues and Uncle Effie's lights on the hill's hoist, swinging on the hill's hoist, being chased by headless chickens, <laughs> each child carrying a watermelon from the car, coolly style, laying on the mat looking at the stars. The Gavin getting clipped behind the ear by Uncle Steve, one of us smoking a cigar, horse <laughs> octopus and mutton fish catching. My father, prevent other, to prevent others from preying on our special spots, would refer to mutton fish as Madame de Poisson when questioned. <laughs> <laughs> the major reason for Uncle Mixlin's longevity is his loving and supporting family, led by Rose and Evan and Fiona, and his guardian angels, Maria and John. What a monumental effort. I also love watching all the grandkids looking up to you and looking after their buffle. Uncle Mick, it's been an honour and privilege to be one of your nephews. Everyone inside and outside this family loves you. I don't think we can top that now, but Aunt Chrissy, did you want to say anything?
Okay, dessert time.